Yesterday, a seven-year-old sneaked from his house to buy biscuits and he was hit. And so when you see him in the street tomorrow with a stone in his hand, you should know better than blame him. Nine-year-old Hazila was playing in the public park when pellets hit her left eye. And today she asks, Auntie Mehbooba, what was my fault? Eight-year-old Dunayag went out to buy some milk. And today he lies critical on a hospital bed. 300 pellets were found in Riaz's body. He was returning from work when killed. His brother's marriage was only four days away. What had been readied for the wedding was used at the funeral. Shabir was dragged from his house, beaten and butchered to death. Insha was standing in her balcony when pellets hit her body, her eyes, leaving her blinded for life. Basit was shot at in the legs and pushed 20 feet deep. He was to leave the next day for his college in Punjab. But for us, college can wait, death cannot. So India, well, Sindhu got you a silver, here is a gold for you. On 15th August, a flag of a country that our hearts never again shall belong to is raised, raised by the oppressors, the rapists of our land. Mushtaq's wife is admitted in the hospital. He is to become a father today. But Mushtaq can't come. He needs a curfew pass that he has not. This baby shall be stories told of the day of his birth when all lay shut and burnt and curfew lay imposed and of the nation that was celebrating its independence and its silver while with its sport in Kashmir 6,000 successful targets it had already won a gold. No candlelight march for Asia, none for Nilo for either. Thatti women raped in Kunan Poshpora. Damini is, but Asia is no India's daughter. From every patribal Shopia and Kunan Poshpora, the soul of my land shall rise. I will be born in every village. A sister was raped, a brother was harassed. In every street that a father has shouldered a coffin. In all the houses brought down to rubble. Through hundred Asiyas and Vamiks and Naims. But till then, Shabir was dragged from his house and into his grave. And that, dear India, is the gold medal for you. When he held my father up by his collar and asked him to say Bharat Mata Ki Jai, never again did I rise for any anthem, not when in school we had the visiting PM. Never again shall we belong to you, not in spirit, not in identity. But today, a one-year-old has become a target of your gun, and that, dear India, is a gold medal for you. Room denied, double frisk at every airport. You call me a hypocrite. My narrative falls and my community anti-national. Ask me for proofs for my loyalty to your nation. I tried. I tried raising myself up as not an anti-Indian. And you, you made sure I constantly ended up feeling one. Kashmir is yours and Kashmiris are not. That's seven lakh troops you need to maintain the integral part. And that, dear India, is the unspoken referendum of Kashmiris. You claim to be the world's biggest democracy. And the promise of your first PM remains unfulfilled. You rape our land and stand tall in our debt. 32,000 widows, 97,000 orphans, 6,000 unmarked graves in Kashmir. And that, dear India, is the gold medal for you. I don't know what you need to be to stand up against this, to stand up against a war crime for integrity, for humanity, to stand up against an armed man with a pellet gun in his hand, to stand by a five-year-old's pellet-ridden body. Dear Indians, I know you can hear me. Death shall silence us all, but before we die, we're alive. 72 killed, 6,000 injured, 100 blinded, and when shall we hear from you?